Welcome, Ben Runner. Hey everybody, Kieran A.K. The Laird here, and um, I've got a hardware review for you this week. I'm taking my usual uh, break from the documentaries. I do two of those followed by a hardware review, so sorry if you were expecting a documentary this week. But uh, I like to take a break every few weeks because um, they take a long time to make, it's several days sometimes, and um, it's a, a, a real drain on... Uh, me and the other things I have to do because obviously I have a, a day job <laughs> as well as YouTube that I have to fulfill so um, I'm sorry if you went to documentary but here's a hardware review and um, these have been proving pretty popular as well which is why I'm continuing with them and um, I do get lots of requests to do hardware reviews as well so yes I will keep on doing them for those who like them now this week you will see that we are doing the Sinclair ZX Spectrum Vega and uh, I don't first of all I just want to say that I'm not going to go into the the whole um, Vega Plus thing this is the original Vega not the Vega Plus I have already reviewed the Vega Plus on this channel um, which is up there in the top right hand corner so if you do want to take a look at the the Vega Plus which is the handheld model then um, you can watch my my previous video. Um, I was one of the very, very first people, I think, in the world, actually, to review the Vega Plus handheld, and I think I, mine was the first video on YouTube, in fact, of it. So um, so there you go. You can, you can have a look at that if you want to. And if you want to know more about why I'm not going to cover the Vega Plus, if you're not aware of that whole scandal around that and the ongoing legal battle and, and et cetera that are still going to this day, then um, you need to watch the Slopes Game Room documentary that I um, that I wrote and he presented, which is over on his channel. And again, that's up in the top right hand corner. So um, if you'd like to uh, to go and watch that, then please um, then please do so. Um, as long as you've got an hour and a half of your time to uh, to spend, because it really is a, a very lengthy um, story. Um, but an incredible one nonetheless. So if you haven't already seen it or you don't already know that story, then I strongly suggest that you do go and watch it, um, even though it is a long one. So let's get on with this anyway. This is the ZX Spectrum Vega. So this is the original one. Um, there's the box and I've put a, uh, a normal Spectrum next to it. And here's the actual device. I've already taken it out of the box. I'll show you what's in, in there and stuff in a moment. And um, later on in the video, I will show you what it looks like plugged in. But you can already see um it's a pretty dinky little thing and you can already see as well that it's it's styled very much after the original spectrum so this is an original um 48k rubber key spectrum as you can see with the lovely old dead flesh keyboard and there is the vega so if we put it there it's well roughly about a, qu a quarter of the size a, a bit over that and obviously the, the the original spectrum wasn't big in the first place i mean if i put my hands over it you can see how small the original spectrum was. So this is 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 really is probably no bigger than a than an Xbox controller. In fact, one second, jump cut here. Badum, there we go. So there is uh, the Vega. There is my Xbox uh, One Elite controller, um, and you can see actually the Xbox One Elite controller is actually slightly bigger. Um, it's a bit taller and a bit wider. So there you go. So it gives you a good idea of the size of this thing. Um, you've got authentic rubbery. They're not as rubbery as the original keys. They're a little bit more solid, but they still they still do appear to be a kind of rubberized plastic. So there you've got four buttons, um, another four buttons down here. And um, that's your reset, that's your joypad. Um, what else have we got on here? So down here, there is an SD card slot, which is awesome because it means you can put on your own games onto an SD card, but there is a caveat with that. Uh, must mention is that because of the way this is designed, in fact, it doesn't have a keyboard, um, you will need uh, key map files. You can create your own, or for a lot of the games, you can actually download them. Um, lots of people have, have gone out and made them. And what that means is, because a lot of Spectrum games have menus, you know, you have to select joystick, keyboard, um, things like that, 
then obviously they, there's, there's shortcuts that you can use these buttons instead to start the game. Um, the, the controls were already mapped for you, so you don't have to worry about that part. Um, and also within games, you've obviously got some games, for example, you'd need to use a space bar for an operation or uh, P for pause or whatever. So they've obviously mapped these keys into those other additional keyboard keys that you might need in the games. So when you're adding games from SD card, you have to create those files for the games for them to work properly with the Vega. Um, there are some um, exceptions, but a lot of them you will need those key map files. So they're there on the internet if you can find them or say, or you can create your own. There is a guide on how to create your own. Um, you'll notice as well, there's a little rainbow flash there, um, obviously to, to copy the one on the original spectrum down there in the corner. Um, coming out of here, we have two cables, as you can see. On the end of these very, very long cables, they are extremely long, which is a good thing. You have the we have a um, a standard USB there that is for powering the device. So you can either plug that into you know like a phone charger unit um, where you can plug your own USB things in, or what I do is I just plug it into the USB socket on my television and it it works perfectly. Just plugged into that, it provides more than enough power. And there's our composite connections. There is no HDMI. I am sad to say. It was left off because it would have cost too much to put on a, on a little device like this. And um, they didn't want to make it too expensive. So unfortunately, there is no um, HDMI out on it, um, which I know a lot of people, it might be a deal breaker for some people. I know a lot of people complained about it when it came out. Uh, it doesn't bother me, to be honest, because I <laughs> I mentioned it later. I'll probably mention it later on when you actually see it for real. But... <laughs> The spectrum shouldn't be crystal clear. It never was when it came out. So for an authentic look, it should always look a little bit fuzzy, to be honest with you. But there we go. Um, you'll see how it looks later on in the video. Um, so this, here's the box. So inside it, that's just a sleeve. Um, I don't really do unboxings, as I said before on this channel, but I'll just show you what you get in it. So you do get um, a quite lengthy um, user manual, which shows about how to connect it, what the buttons do. Uh, in-game functions virtual keyboard as well um, to mention that so you know if you do want to get a keyboard up on the screen for example text adventures or games where you want to enter your name on the high score table or whatever you can bring up the virtual keyboard at any time um, to type stuff in um, all pretty straightforward it tells you about loading additional games from SD card um, how to do that upgrading the software um, so all of that is in there and it's got a troubleshooting guide at the back and that's about it really there's there's i don't think there was anything else in the box thing all i've got in the bottom here is is, is packaging hang on what have i got here what's what I left in there oh that's a, a a scart block you know so you can uh plug your cables in and then connect it by scart if you want to they did include one of those that's nice of them i forgot that was in there to be honest i've got loads of those blooming things anyway i've, I've got hundreds of them in a box in the garage so I wouldn't have I wouldn't have needed it anyway. So what else have we got on the box? So obviously here it mentions that it's officially licensed from Sky Broadcasting Group. Um, a lot of people don't are probably aren't aware that Sky actually own the Spectrum brand because they bought Amstrad and Amstrad owned the Spectrum brand. So therefore, it now belongs to Sky. So Sky licensed this out officially. Um, website which no longer works uh there's a little brief guide about how it connects up and what's in there and that's pretty much it there's there's not else to say and yeah it says it preloaded with 1000 games there is 1000 games on it um there's not 1000 good games on it <laughs> not quite obviously there is a lot of filler there's loads of text adventures there's lots of old basic games um so you will have to filter through to, to to find the good stuff, but there is more than enough good stuff on there, to be honest. I would rather they'd not put 1,000 and they'd, I don't know, put a, a figure that was meaningful, like, for example, 1 to 8 would have been good because of the 1 to 8K spectrum. So maybe just brought it down to 128 really good games um, would have been a better idea than perhaps the, the current system of having 1,000 and loads and loads of junk and filler. And uh, and yeah, so I mean, the build quality. Go back to the unit a moment. Is actually very very good. It's very solid. These were actually built in the UK. They were not built in China, believe it or not. They were built by a factory in Nottingham. So the build quality is a hell of a lot better than perhaps you would expect um, 
from a device like this are much better than a lot of the similar kind of um, plug and play devices out there. It is, it is a really, really good build quality. And um, that's about all I can say about it, really. Uh, I think the best thing to do now is to go in to the games, get it hooked up to the television, and um, you can see what it actually looks like running. So here we are with the actual Vega itself hooked up to uh, television and uh, this is um, a pretty big TV so I think it actually gives a, a, a good example of what it's going to look like. This is a 50 inch um, Sony um, HD TV so you can see the picture quality isn't too bad although um, as already mentioned there is no HDMI connection so it's only composite. I mean I suppose the funny thing is that it is slightly, slightly, slightly blurry as you can see. There's a, you know, it's not quite crystal clear. But to be honest, <laughs> it doesn't really bother me because that's actually quite authentic. Because, you know, I, I certainly know that back in the day, my the picture from my spectrum into my TV certainly wasn't um, certainly wasn't perfect. So I'm just trying to get the camera perfect uh, lined up, but I can't seem to quite quite get it right but anyway um this will give you the general idea so say it's on a 50 inch sony tv so you'll see what it look, will look like if you put it on your big tv um obviously it's actually preferential to probably put it on a smaller tv but here we go so we've got the um the games in alphabetical order so we can press right on the joypad to scroll through them you can see there so um for example, Alien Destroyer, which a lot of people will remember because it came with the, um, the Spectrum Plus 2s. It was a packing game. So before the game starts, it gives you the um, controls. So you go fire left, right. So it tells you FS. You see all the, the ones you need, really. And then it loads up. And then um, you see it's slightly blurry again. Oh, the camera's tilted a bit more again. I'm going to see if I can get that. Um, right, so, okay. Uh, so we can select three to start the game. There we go. This is funny because this game is one that I remember being, I remember really enjoying when I got it with my Spectrum Plus 2. And then I played it more recently to find out it's, um, yeah, it's, it's a pretty crap um, Galaxian clone. There's certainly one um, example anyway of the I'll find something a bit more interesting in a moment. So there we go. Let's try another game. So you can reset and then it will just boot back into this again. You can view the role of honor, etc. So there we go. Um, I'm just going to load this. I'm not going to play it, um, but just so you can see. An old favorite, back to school. This is good because this is a great example of the key mapping. Because obviously back to school, as, as many people know, uses a hell of a lot of different buttons. Um, it's more than just fire because you've obviously got to hit, you've got the jump, you've got sit stand, you've got run, you've got right, um, stink bombs, water pistols. There's so many different um, buttons in this game. And uh, obviously this gives you a rundown of what, of what they all are. Though to be honest, you're probably not going to memorise all of those, so you might want to write them down. One thing I should mention as well is, you can probably see already, is that by default the um, the screen is set to uh, 69 ratio from the Vega. So if you do want it in 4.3 for the authentic Spectrum look, you would need to um, actually just change it on your, your TV settings. Uh, it's a shame it doesn't output in 4.3. Um, that perhaps would have been preferable or... Or maybe you've given you an option when you boot it up. 
but it's a minor complaint because you can just set your set TV to the right ratio. There we go, back to school, looks as good as ever. Um, probably my favourite Spectrum game of all time. So I'm not going to play it because if I do play it I'll be on it um, like forever. But you can see the, uh, the demo mode here running and it gives you a good idea of, of what, uh, what the Vega looks like all hooked up. There we go, let's reset again, let's get something else. I just want to show you a few different games just so you've got an idea of, of how it all works. Let's get something that's got some 1 to 8 music as well. I mean, you can hear the music here on the, the title screen, but it'd be good if we could find something else actually that's got some some music in it. Some good stuff on here. I mean, you've got Jetpack there. Look, Kaboom, Night Law, Night Time. Mega Apocalypse, that's got some, that's got some really good music, so let's put that on. So here we go, Mega Apocalypse, um, for a good example of the one to eight sound, with some um, absolutely lovely music by uh, Mr. Jazz Seabrook. I had this um, when I was younger and I always absolutely loved it. It was a conversion of the C64 and everyone raved about it on the C64. And uh, I still think the Spectrum version is pretty good as well. It's got speech as well, though you probably didn't hear that very well. The only thing about this one version compared to the C64 is you've got these monochrome graphics. It was a clone of the arcade game Mad Planets, if I remember rightly. And I died. That was good, wasn't it? Oh, got me. I'm doing extremely crap on this, aren't I? Some really crackly speech. So there you go, Mega Apocalypse. Um, me failing at Mega Apocalypse, should I say. So Roll of Honor as well, you've got there. Uh, um, I did try to get it, but obviously didn't get that in time. I'll try to get it next time, just so I can show you what it looks like. Saber Wolf. I mean, you can you have to scroll right down on some of these. It's first you think, oh well, no, that's everything. It's actually not everything because um, you have to scroll right down. I mean, also S, you've got absolutely tons. So, for example, there's Switchblade, another game with great music. So, main reason I'm going to put this on actually is because the music is just so good. Music on this one is by the late great Ben Dalglish. Big Loss, he was one of the best chip tune musicians out there. Some of his Spectrum stuff was really good. Like this. the underground bit. I mean listen to that music, it's just absolutely fantastic. It really is so good on this game. There we go, get the items. So there's a bit of switchblade. So you can see something else. Perhaps we'll look at one more game briefly um, before we wrap up. There we go, there's another favourite. Let's put Finders Keepers on. Another game I absolutely loved when I was younger. Heart 
of the uh, brilliant Magic Knight trilogy. I'm carrying a lump of cheese. This is good, but I did prefer the um, the uh, sequels. Doing pretty badly here as well. I haven't played this game in years. But anyway, it gives you an idea of um, you know of what it's all about and what it looks like when you put it on the TV. So yeah, there we go. Um, let's finish off by see if we can get this roll of honour up. seem to be working this is press two which is what I'm doing oh there we go so you go you get a roll of honor as well of all the people who we backed it so if you were one of the rights holders you can your name will appear on this list here and if you really want to you can view the games rights holders as well all the people who license the games because of course everything on here is um is official so you know, a lot there from alternative software, for example, we're pretty prolific with the Spectrum, so loads of stuff from them. Um, see tons of stuff from them, probably more from them than any other anyone else, actually. So, yeah, so there we go. So that's about it, really. So, um, in summary, um, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's a good little device. Um, they can be picked up for peanuts now, and... Um, if you don't have the space or or want the faff of having a, a full size spectrum hanging around with cassettes and discs and whatever, then um, this takes up almost no room. So it's a good um, alternative. You've also got the SD card slot as well, which is very very useful as well for um, if you want to add your own games on. But as I, I said previously, the only problem with that is, is is sorting out the key map files. But there is a lot that you can download online. So um, there are people who've already done the hard work for you. Um, in that respect but I mean I suppose it's not for the Spectrum purist I mean if you're a Spectrum purist you've probably already got a Spectrum or in many cases multiple Spectrums but um, if you just want to hanker after a little bit of nostalgia from your youth of growing up playing Spectrum games then um, then something like this is absolutely perfect and it's a shame that the hardware was never allowed to evolve uh, in the way that it should have and we obviously had all the um, the big problems with um, the court case and stuff that I, I already mentioned and yeah it's a shame the um, the hardware didn't put progress and say in the way that it should so uh, I thank you for watching and um, I hope you enjoyed my look at the Spectrum Vega and I'll see you all again with another video very soon bye bye